Hello and welcome back. All right, so previously we installed Mininet using the uh, GitHub repository and then just installing it right on our virtual machine. Uh, today what we're going to do is install Mininet using their VM, which is actually the recommended way of installing. Um, I had actually tried this before and had more success doing it uh, from the actual Git repository, so I had started doing videos with that one. But we'll go ahead and walk through this just to kind of show you what I encountered. Uh, so we'll go ahead to the downloads page, find the release. Uh, we'll take a look at the guidelines here. They've got the release and previous ones listed. And uh, we'll go ahead and take the recommended one, which is the Ubuntu 20.04 image. And we'll go ahead and pull that down, and we're going to use that in our virtual box environment. All right, so as soon as that's downloaded, we're going to open it up and import it. Uh, so they have the recommended information. Probably recommend up, upping the CPU and RAM on this, just to give you a little more bandwidth to work with. And we'll go ahead and hit import. And it's gonna take a couple of minutes, obviously, to import and set up the VM. Uh, in just a second here, it should start uh, rolling through and setting up. All right, very good, so we're starting up a virtual machine. And it's going to take a little while to run, so uh, we won't bore you with all the gory details. You can do that yourself. Uh, we'll go ahead and cut here for a few seconds. That way you have some time to grab a coffee or whatever you'd like to do. All right, and here we go. We're uh, run through our install process. Now we're going to go ahead and boot up the VM. Uh, so this is going to be the initial boot. And once it's up, we're going to start working through the first couple of steps of the mini net walkthrough. And we'll go ahead and log in. So the default credentials to log into the VM are going to be Mininet and Mininet for password as well. Okay, all right, and let's go ahead and start up our Wireshark instance. Huh, all right, what's this? So it looks like something's running, but it can't load the application. Um, so let's see. Now, if we look through the uh, documentation, what we're gonna find is we need X11 or some kind of GUI or something like that, right? So there are some troubleshooting steps on the, the website. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and install a GUI. Uh, so there is a recommended approach to doing that. So we'll install what we need to here. Okay, and we're gonna let that run. Okay, and here we are. We're getting our GUI set up and our display manager. And fast forward, and we're gonna go ahead and just reboot the virtual box now. Awesome. All right, so here's our password prompt. Um, again, credentials remain the same, Mininet, Mininet. And we'll log in here. It's a little sluggish for me. As I said, I'd recommend probably upgrading the resources a little bit just to give you a little more uh, uh, power and RAM. Um, all right, logging in. We'll grab our terminal. All right, let's try running Wireshark again and see what we get. There we go. All right, and it is loaded up. We'll go ahead and start capturing packets with Wireshark. And we could switch back over to our terminal. We get a new tab. And we'll set up a network. 
Awesome, so it's setting up. We see the scroll bar on Wireshark moving. We'll run a ping all. Very good. So Wireshark is up and running. Uh, Mininet is up and running. And very good, so we'll uh, exit out of there. Looks like everything is working as anticipated. And we are good to go to start using Mininet. As I said, there's, there's different install approaches. Um, I did this the first time. I preferred downloading from GitHub and installing that way. Uh, but you make the decision. But thank you for watching, and uh, remember to check back for new content.